Hey, uh, oh, oh, holy, uh, hey, uh, 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 hey. So this story comes from my beautiful little village of Kitkatla, where I grew up. And um, throughout history, the way our people have been taught is by stories. And I come to share a special story. And some of it will be familiar to you because all of your ancestors, no matter where you come from on this beautiful Mother Earth, they know a little bit about this story. The first time I heard the story, it was about Noah's Ark and animals two by two and a few people who were saved. The second time I heard the story, the story went like this. Roy, I'm going to tell you a story and you know a little bit about it. But this story has been told in our village of Kitkatla since the great flood that covered the earth. And this is the way the story has been told for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's been passed down from generation to generation. And I'm telling you the story just the way it was told to me. These children on the village beach were playing on the beach and they decided they were going to practice being good trappers. So they made a, a trap and it was made of a box and I call these, in those days the box would be made from wood and they didn't have nails. So the wood was what we call galun. It was a box, a long plank that's cut and scored and steamed and three corners are bent. And then the fourth corner is joined with you wood pegs and pitch. So the boy went to borrow one of these boxes from his house. He brought it to the beach. And one of the other children that was playing with him got a little stick. And another child went and got a string, a long, long string. They tied the string to the stick and they lifted the box up. It was upside down on the beach and they put the stick underneath the box and they put some bread underneath the, the box to try to attract. And they wanted to catch a crow because crows are very wise. They're very wary. And if they could catch a crow, that would be an incredible thing. It would show how patient and how quiet they can be for a long time. So the kids went in behind the bushes and they sat there and they waited and they waited and they waited. Crow came and sat in the tree beside them and the crow is watching. Nothing's happening and he can see the bread under the box but he's not quite sure whether he should go down there and get it. And finally some little birds came along like chickadees and they were going to get the bread and the crow watched really carefully and then thought, I guess I'm going to go down there and get that before those little birds get it. So down came the crow and all the little birds flew away and the crow sat there looking at that bread under the box looking around. Nobody, it looked safe. So the crow went under the box and just as he grabbed the bread, the boy pulled the stick, down came the box and they caught the crow. So now the crow is under the box and the kids think, okay, we're going to take the string and tie it, tie the R end to the crow's foot and hang on to the stick and we're going to bring the crow out and they pulled some feathers from the crow to see if it could still fly and when it could fly they pulled it back and pulled some more feathers from the crow and they did that until the crow couldn't fly anymore and then they weren't interested anymore and they didn't they weren't taught that where our, our laws about our relationship to the world around us is to live with respect and love for all things. So if you have to trap something for food, then you do it in a respectful way and you thank the creator and you thank the animal for giving up its life. That beautiful day, 
clouds came over, just kind of like big rain clouds. We call them um, yin, yin. We are the Jim Xians, and Jim Xian means in the rain. So no big deal. But the rain kept falling, and the storm got bigger, and the rain kept falling. And pretty soon, when the high tide came, it came up to the highest point that it would come, and then it kept coming. And so the people started to get worried, and they thought, well, maybe, maybe something's wrong. Maybe that water's going to come up into our houses. And as the water got up higher and higher, they knew that the, it was going to flood their houses. And then the old people got the chiefs together, the elders got the chiefs together. And the elders are really the bosses, and the chiefs just follow what the elders say. But some of the chiefs are elders. So they realize something's wrong, and we have to deal with this. We have to protect our people. And so the people got the whole village together in Kitkatla, and they all got into the canoes that they had there on the beach. And the old people said, we are, we are going to go to the big mountain not far from here. And they started paddling through the storm and the waves and the wind. And they got to the mountain and they dropped their anchor. Now, anchors in the old days were incredible. They were big rocks. So, I don't know, they'd be 100 pounds, 150 pounds, kind of a big round rock that was, our people used jade and basalt really hard rocks to chip away at softer rocks and they would actually chip a hole right into a big rock and then our ropes were made from cedar bark that was all pounded so it was soft and then twisted until it looked like a normal rope that you have today and they that was the anchor and the rope so there they were and they took ropes and they tied all the canoes together so they wouldn't get pulled apart in the storm and the old people started praying and crying and praying and crying. Why is this happening? What can we do to change this? And one old lady fell asleep. She was working so hard praying, she got tired and she fell asleep. Well, when this lady fell asleep and she was dreaming, she saw in her dream a vision and she saw these children playing on the beach and she saw what they did and she woke up and she said to the chiefs and the elders please pay attention to me pay attention i know what happened i saw it in my vision i was sleeping and i saw children on the beach and they were playing and they trapped a beautiful crow we call it ah ah in our language you know why we call them ta? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the children caught this poor crow, and they did real bad things to it, really mean things. And then they left it on the beach to, to die because some other animal could come and kill it. And we've forgotten our ways. We've forgotten our laws. We forgot to teach our children love and respect for the world, for other animals. No reason to do that to a crow. And so it's not the children's fault. It's because we have stopped teaching our children the way we should live. And our children didn't know. God looked down on the birds that were flying in the sky because there was no place for them to land. And they were bumping into each other and their feathers were falling to the waters below and realized that these people are suffering or these animals are suffering, these birds are suffering because of the people. And now the people are telling me they are going to change their ways. So peace came back to the world. The west wind came. The west wind we call Gulka. And when Gulka comes, all of the yen, all of the clouds are blown away and the sun shines. And that's what happened. The storm left. Peace came back to the world.
the waters went down, the people went back to the Kitkatla, and they rebuilt their homes, and all the animals rebuilt their homes, and the birds enjoyed building their nests, and everything was good again. And so, when everybody was comfortable in their homes, and in the weather and in the cold of winter, that winter they said to each other, they had a big party like this, and all the people came in the village into one big house, and the old people talked, and they said to everyone, especially the chiefs, we must find a way to remind people always of what happened here. We have to tell the story over and over again. And the best way we have to tell a story is with songs and dancing. And then it's repeated over and over and the power of the story is stronger. And so we have to find a chief who can dance the peace dance. We're going to call this the peace dance because the storm went away and peace came back to the world. They dressed the chief. Leggings were put on the front of his legs. An apron, a dance apron, was put around his waist. A big design on the back of the blanket. Buttons sewn on from abalone. Beautiful blanket. They put a headdress on the chief. And the chief knelt down and held his head up like this. And some people put eagle down in the top of the chief's headdress. I am one of those dancers, and I have my own song. And during the song, the beat goes. And in one of our songs is, uh, Hoo-ya, poo-ya, hoo-ya, hoo-ya, poo-ya. And when you come to that point where it's hoo-ya, 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 eagles down, shake, shaken from the headdress. And all of the singers are behind the dancer, and all of the chiefs are sitting behind the dancer backing the dancer up. And the dancer is reminding the people of the flood and what happens when we forget the laws of our ancestors. And it's really simple. You love and respect the world you live in. That's it. And so from that day to this day, the dance has been danced up and down this coast. The Kwagyul people, Kwakwala speaking people, they kept the potlatch going when the laws of our country and the government and the police wouldn't let people do these dances. They wouldn't let people have a drum. They took the drums away from people. But the people from Fort Rupert, Alert Bay, the Mama Lilikala, they all would have a birthday party and all the dancers would come out. Or they would have a wedding, and all the dancers would come out. So they kind of disguised the way they did things. And they made it possible for people like us to learn those ways. And so many years ago, I, I was chosen to do this dance. And I can think of no better time in the world for all of the world to hear this story the way I just told it. We, we live in a time when we can completely destroy our mother. We are all family. We are all children of Mother Earth. There's only one race of human beings. 
And today, in my village, there is not one peace dancer. Neither is there in Haida Gwaii. Neither is there among the Niska or the Gitxen. To see this dance done, you have to go to Bella Bella or Fort Rupert. So they're the only ones dancing that dance today. So my purpose in teaching this story to everyone, anyone who will listen, is to hopefully remind my people that it's time that we found chiefs who walk in healing, who dance this dance, and we train singers just like they did after the flood to sing the songs of peace and to help people return to the beautiful ways of our ancestors. And in that way, we will protect our village. We will protect our ocean and our lands. And that's a big thing today. So that story that Chester taught me, uh, it's one of my mantras. That's it. Thank you.